Hey everyone, you requested some Philavendral Dwarf action, so enjoy this version of Philavendral Dwarf Engine Overload. Today we'll look at the defining cards and the synergies of the deck. Next, we check the general gameplay, the passing strategy and how to work with your mulligans. Then we do a matchup analysis and last but not least, we'll take a look at some example matches. As always, tell me which decks to cover next down in the comments below and subscribe to me if you would like to see more homecoming deck guides. And now, let's go. Let's look at the cards of this deck. The most important cards of uh, this deck are our engines. Like right in front of it, the Hawker Smuggler, which is one of our big engines. Every turn on turn end, boost a random unit in your hand by one and enables us to get a lot of carry over if it sticks to the board in round one. Kind of similar to Hawker Smuggler, we have the King of Beggars, which does the same thing, but it does it more targeted. So it starts up with your it starts with your low units, um, which just makes it a bit better because, for example, if you have Sheldon in uh, Sheldon's Skags in hand, uh, King of Beggar would always go for Sheldon first before it goes for cards like I don't know, let's say Dragoon or something. So you can play a bit with um, this targeted hand buff, so to say. We also have like um, engines which are not hand buffing, but which are just buffing itself on the board. Let's start at the top, we have um, Gabor Sigrin. Gabor is a very flexible card, because if you play him on melee, it gains resilience, and if you play him on range, it gets immune. So depending what you need in the situation, you can play him. And his ability is, every time you play a dwarf, which you have some in the deck, it will boost itself by one. So if, for example, um, you are able to close the round uh, with Gabor, then you just play him with resilience, and you have like his ability there next round as well. Uh, but if you're like in run free and you're facing square tail or whatever, then range gaining immune is probably a better choice because then it will stick to the board for sure. Also against artifacts, so to say. Then we have... Um, where is she? Um, there is she. There's Milva. And Milva is also an immune unit. Boost self by one whenever you play a square tail unit. So um, if you have like all of those on the boards, you will get some value every round. And there we also have Markham Defender. Every turn, on turn end, it boosts by self if this unit is already boosted. Um, so two more engines for um, your deck. And this also benefits from hand buff, so if you're able to buff it before you play it onto the board, um, you immediately get the value right when you played it. And you don't have to wait another round and to buff it. Which, by the way, this deck lacks. Like, we have no buffing units in the deck, so if you want to play this, you need to hand buff it to, get, uh, to make use of its ability, or you need to use the tactical advantage. And this is like, those are all our, all our engines, so quite a lot of engines. And to make the best of it, we have like other cards in the deck. Let's start with the bronzes here. Dwarven Skirmisher is basically like a 5 point card most of the time. It's um, has some removal options, so it's, uh, and it's also a dwarf, fueling our uh, Sigrin, so to say. So it's just a good card to fill in there. Dwarven Agitator is um, our hand buff unit. Basically, you play it on the ranged row and it buffs a unit, a dwarf, dwarf, important, a dwarf in your hand by two. So this is how you can set up, for example, um, your Markham Defenders, but you can also use it, for example, on Sheldon Skeks to double the power you use with uh, Agitator. Then we have Dragoon. Dragoon is, um, serves two purposes. First of all, it can uh, ruin the enemy's plan. For example, uh, for example, if the enemy plays a rollout unit, like, um, or not even a rollout unit, but let's say a market division, which only activates if it's the only unit in a row, then you can play Riot Dragoon to disable the engine. But we also have uh, units like Hawker Smuggler, which only uh, work on melee row, so if the enemy moves it away, you can use Riot Dragoon to move it back on the melee row, so you're sure to get the value from the Hawker Smuggler. So it's basically a kind of like a little safety net. Markham Volunteers are 6 points if you can uh, play them both at the same time, um, because as soon as there is a Dwarf on the melee row and you play them on the melee rows, it will summon the other Markham Volunteer from your deck. So it's basically value, a bit of thinning, and it works well with um, Sigrin, but also with Mercenary. Because Dwarf and Mercenary damages an enemy with 1, it's an order ability, uh, but it gets a charge every time we play a Dwarf. So um, this has like even this is also has synergy with all the other dwarfs we have in the deck, which is pretty okay. Then um, we have Kieran, and Kieran is kind of like a tech card. So if you want to like tech for something else, um, I've seen some decks which use, for example, um, the Ma the Marka Marauders, which are basically used to have like if they're buffed, they get um, resilience. Um, but in the current meta, I would like go for Kieran 
because Kirin is able to lock a unit and there is a lot of engines out there which you want to lock for sure. Sheldon, we talked a bit about, uh, about him, he damages an enemy by his unit's power, so if you are able to buff him up with Agitator, or like with cards like, for example, Iflin, which also boosts his Curtail unit in hand by 4, um, Sheldon can get really, really big, so if Sheldon at some point is not a 3-point unit anymore, but like a 10-point unit, you will deal 20 damage, so um, keep him in the hand as long as possible and use him when you can get like this, uh, this big value up. But don't wait too long, because like even if it's like a 15-point unit, and you can't find a 15 point target on the enemy's side of the board, then you would probably be better off to use him earlier and to remove an engine which like helps the enemy a lot. So um, think of when to use it. Cleaver is another removal tool. We don't have that much removal tools, so um, Cleaver is in there um, to, you know, especially at the start of the game to delay the setup of the enemy or to just get rid of a big engine. And Cleaver basically damages unit by one for every card in your hand. So, um, as I said, the earlier you play him, the more value you get out of him. You shouldn't keep him in hand longer than, like, let's say, after playing four to five cards, because then his value will really diminish. So, um, try to use him early. Roach is just in there to fin a bit and um, to give us a bit of additional value, because especially in round one, when we play um, our, in our Hawker Smugglers, which just give us um, carry over, basically, the the where we <laughs> roach basically helps us to stay in the round unicorn and chironex is their value combo at the moment so if you can get um, them off and you have like one of the others in your hand they basically help us to either win round one or to finish round two but more about that later like i've already call, uh, talked about and then we have this last card call of the forest Call of the Forest um, is, first of all, a good card to get the cards out of your deck which you need, but it also has a lot of synergy with our card. For example, let's say you play, um, you start with Cleaver and, um, and Cleaver is just on the board and really just provides you free value. You can then use Call of the Forest on Cleaver to get Cleaver back into your deck, so you maybe want to use him in round 3 again, um, but at the same time you can get a lot of cards out of your hand and buff them by free. And this buffing by free is the important part because, um, for example, Sheldon's Kex buffed by free is already a 12 point card because it's like six point um, value and damages an enemy by units power, so 12 points, right? And there are other cards like Malcolm Defender, if, it's, if you get it from the deck, it's already boosted, so it will already start ticking. Let's quickly talk about the gameplay plan. The ideal rounds for you are two long rounds, one long round one, which is your setup round, and one long round three, which is basically your engine execute round. Basically in round one, you're going for the Hawker Smugglers and King of Beggars to get a lot of carry over for round three. In round three, you use then cards like Gawa Sigrin or the Markham Defender or Milva, which are basically engines that give you points on the board which are hopefully also already hand buffed by uh, your Hawker Smugglers and so on in round one. And this way, since we have a lot of engines in the deck, and that's the why it's called engine overload, is if the enemy has removal, or if the enemy has locks, there are only so much locks he can apply to you, right? So if you already locked, let's say, like Hawker Smuggler in round one, then you won't be able to get, like, uh, let's say, your... No, Milva can't be locked anyways because it's, it's immune. Um, but let's say you can't lock your Markham Defender or your Sigrin, for example. Hopefully you can also play Sigrin immune, so you can't even damage it and get rid of it this way, that way. So basically try to get hand units out in round 1 and the other engines in round 3. Round 2 is kind of like your, if you need to play it, this is where you need to drop your battle cards like Unicorn, Chironex. So it's good to save them if you can, um, if the enemy tries to bleed you. But the ideal thing is that you either win round 1 or you can even go one card down in round one, but only if you have um, your Hawker Smuggler and your King of Beggars established, so they give you this carry over. If you don't have carry over, um, use your Unicorn, your Chironex, and your other value cards right now in round one, so you secure it. Also, you can try to use Call of the Forest to um, get some value cards out of your deck if you need it really in round one. It's also good, um, as I said already, um, to maybe get cards back into your deck you would like to have in round 3. Also good cards for... let me see here... Um, good cards for round 1 is also like Iflin, because Iflin gives you as well carry over for round 3. Sometimes you want to use Iflin in round 1 and let's say play it on Sheldon, and then use the value from Sheldon immediately 
but it really depends on your matchup and when you have like a matchup with a lot of tempo you may want to get the, those out already if you play against someone who doesn't have a lot of tempo and your engines are ticking then you can even think of discarding cards you don't want to have in round one like for example typical cards like i want to get rid of are the dragoons agitators of course because of the carryover and um, sometimes like mercenary this really depends against which deck you're playing obviously against archer's queen you probably want to have draw mercenary mercenary right and well and then it's basically just play your engines and over how say it steamroll the opponent mulligan wise you want to keep cards that are engines as i said like hawker smuggler defenders gabor and in round one of course you would like to have Ephelin and dwarves to the dwarf and agitators to buff your cards but don't like i would say just get rid of roach if um and maybe like another volunteer but don't go deep into your mulligans because what's most important is that in run three you have the cards you need if you end up in a run three without any engines that's bad so it's better to save up all your mulligans in round one to then use them in round three to get the engine cards you need and then do the stream roll now we go through some example matchups to help you understand the gameplay even better blood first crack the key against them is to pass in round one at the right time before they can utilize wild bow of the sea to get card advantage while your engines had enough time to generate carryover. Run 3 will be a lot easier because you can use your immune units in addition to the hand buffed units to play around blood first entirely. Utilize unicorn and tactical advantage to protect your hawker smugglers in round 1 and utilize cards like Cleaver, Sheldon, Kieran to disable their ships. Sultan Emir Dwarven Mercenary can help you to deal with the cows of Kutter Germain, so play it early and protect it while stacking up charges. Friar Dragoon can move away some units from the melee row and your Cleaver and Co. can remove some of the higher units. Other than that, you need to rely on your carryover and on the ticks of your engines to get ahead. Engine Full Test This deck likes long round as much as our dwarves do, but you have the advantage of sacrificing tempo in round 1, 4, round 3. So set up your engines in round 1 and try to prolong the round as much as possible so the enemy needs to play their good cards while you generate the carryover. Kieran, Cleaver, Chironex and Sheldon can help tremendously to target key engines of your enemies and the later round, so don't waste them on bronzes and look out for Visigotha, Anna Stringer, Dandelion and Co. Assault Fall Test In this deck, it may make sense to use Philavantrel already in round 1 so your hawker smugglers won't die for Wes and their mages can set up 1 point units for remnants or siphonon. Keep your removals to the neither commander setup and consider pushing round 2 if you either can use Scarlet with Resilience, or you have some excellent hand buff finishes. Immunity is critically in run 3, because typically they run removals like Ike, Gaunter, Dim or Seltkir. Woodland Giants The longer you can play around, the higher your success, because then the tempo does not matter that much. Therefore it is also essential that you win round 1 or a tempo will force additional cards out of you in round 2. Going 1 card down and therefore utilizing a long run 3 is perfectly worth it. Against Giants, you can pump up Sheldon to 30 points and not lose any points. And a 26 point Sheldon can definitely turn the game as a finisher. Also, try to get rid of the 5 units with Skirmishers or Dwarf Mercenary. And now, let's look at some example matches. Usurper! I shall make well, that basically again. denies me like 10 points straight up. But, except in that, let's see if we are still be able to make it work. We have one engine which is good, another one for later. Uh, we can fit a bit which is good as well. I'm not sure if I would like to have a second engine. But I mean like this this is alright, like those um, help us uh, for the carryover as well. Question is, is this enough point wise? Worst case we can use call of the forest, call of the forest on the agitator, so let's see. Also like we're on red. So worst case, we just pass at some point. Um, damage enemy by one. Problem is the reach. Uh, okay, no way we can get rid of this again. The question also would have been like to get cleaver out. I mean, this would be just like would this would nine tactical advantage and give us a lot of points straight away. And then I have an engine. So actually, 
I forgot that I had Cleaver in hand, but with Cleaver, like big engines in the beginning, no problem. So, nice. Good that we have him in the deck and in the hand in this case. So, Mangonel, um, this is nothing I can uh, kill now. The question is, do I care that much? And the question is, does he play some shoot version? Um, in this case, I think it's just like get out like my first engine the sooner. This is out the more, it's like the better for us in the next rounds. Basically, this is providing with carryover. Sometimes we use cards um, immediately in this round, like. Agitator, if it would get buffed, but um, it's better like if he gets if he buffs stuff like I don't know. In this case, actually, probably only the skirmisher and the defender. Oh, also, Gabor no! probably. We need to see if we want to go resilience or um, anything else. But let's see. Uh, okay, in this case, we can just like we could have like just use the agitator now to buff the um, defender just in case. But before I do this. Question is, do we do we want need an engine here or now? I think we probably need it. So um, we've left the nice engine right there. <laughs> and then let's just like as long as we're ahead, like I want to stay ahead. I want to get that extra card. So let's get the Markham Defender out next, and then we go for the volunteers for a bit of thinning. And we can always use Gabor as like a last card to get like the five extra points and prevent the try passing. But before we do that, let's see. Let's get the engine out. This is also good, like for um, run free. We need to play a bit differently now, Who since I no, I don't get the um, Philaventra. Hmm. The question is, do we go for resilience or not? We could also gain immune, but like doesn't make too much sense here. There's one lock already out, like. There could still be another lock in there. We know that he doesn't play shoot anymore, so there's probably another uh, um, cavalry. Question is, it's pretty unlikely that he has it in hand, right? But like dealing five damage from the elf cut is also fine, especially if he has Serid or something. So I probably don't want to play this right now. Since we're ahead anyway, let's play the agitator here. Our brothers in the uh, need us. Can still decide to play this round if we want to. If we want to, let's see. Order. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, Nilfgaard has some damage options. Ah, oh, that's good. Thanks, Karen. Kieran. Why did he double hit? I thought it was like four versus five. Uh, oh well. Um, so this will give me six. It would be actually enough. So let's do that. We'll put there we go. Boots to basically, basically denied our two main engines here, which is a shame, but we're still ahead. That's pretty okay. Let's see. Yeah, okay, well, I think he will win this. Yeah, there we go. Pretty good ointment. The thing is, like, we could have played Gabo before, just to make sure... Um, to get the extra buffs from the dwarves. This is basically five. This is definitely more than five. So let's see what works we could get. Sheldon would be pretty awesome. Skirmish is enough. Mercenary is fine, I guess. Defender is okay. I guess we go for Call of the Forest here. Let's get rid of the Dwarven Agitator. And do we want to go Sheldon or not is the question. I mean, we could just like kill the Mangonel. Or we get rid of the Sergeant. I think I'm gonna get go for the for the extra extra card here. So let's go for Sheldon, and we don't use it use him entirely, like we don't use his full damage. But um, we get rid of one of his engines, so no more extra point from his side. I think that's that's worth it. I think we denied here probably two extra points for sure. If all of the free cards are revealable cards, then we got even one more. But let's see. So I would really want to save the Gabor. But let's see if we can. Good thing is that like even like by playing Sheldon, we got some nice tempo here. He's like four behind. There we go. That's the extra card for us right there. Nice. That's nice. 
problem is now we don't have the field of entrail in round three, but we're not that um, dependent on him. So that's a good thing here. That's good. It dwarfs as an interesting engine. I, I don't want a mulligan here, uh, because like I can just trap us. Because a long round is still good for us if we can get cards like King of Beggars, um, Milva, for example. Drawing into both unicorns would be amazing. And if you manage to somehow get a buffed uh, Markham Defender, not bad as well. So let's see. That's also a good engine here. And like, immunity is very, very important in run free. Okay, let's look for. Okay, perfect. Two unicorns. Let's get rid of one of those. Okay, that's fine. The question is, do we need the Agitator here? Don't really have something to set up. Okay, that's not a bad hand. We follow Letho. Yeah, he banishes. Like, I don't care at all. I think we just start with Gabor, and then we probably go with Smuggler. I mean, you can also just start with Smuggler, but it doesn't make difference. If he locks, like, my Smuggler, he will lock it anyway afterwards. But if he has damage in you, it's... Uh, uh, you know what, let's let's start with Smuggler here. You can even think of unicorning him, so he does, he's, he's not able to damage it, and like he probably has like one more lock and Sarah probably, okay. and Dory Gray, because. So let's go for immunity here. That's why I didn't want to play him first with resilience as well, um, because immunity against like a lock heavy deck, that's good. I mean like immunity against the lock heavy deck, that's good. So. <laughs> We still have the unicorn package, we can lock something bad on his side, like I don't care about the witches. Oh, <laughs> bye bye Milva. And now we just play dwarves, I guess. Um, there's nothing we want to really move away right now. Always hit the biggest unit, so if you play slave infantry, it's like he doesn't get that much value. It's oh, there we go. Already win. Bye. Demo event. Okay, that's. Wars risky trucks. for him, <laughs> probably, but like we don't have that much removal, so he could actually be successful. Okay, we have like two engines, two more engines, which are not hand buffing. We don't need a volunteer. That's good. Call of the forest in this case. We could call of the forest. Cleaver. Worst case, we have a unicorn if the need arises. Well, let's see. Also, we are on red, so basically you can always pass if you want to. <sighs> this is going to be interesting. Against them, I would really love to play more control-oriented yeah! deck, but hey. I mean, we could just cleaver that. That's, that's a good cleaver target. So... There we go. Basically, we get rid of tactic advantage immediately, and now we're six points ahead on red, which is amazing. We don't want to use field of entrail here. We probably want to use field of entrail for. In run three. That's pretty good. We don't have Kieran. Which is a shame. But hey. You can basically kill Mihawk or Smugglers by just playing Ballistas. Like the reinforced ballistas. Okay, play siege tires. Question is if we ignore that. I don't care too much to be honest. For me, it's more important to get the carry over for uh, the next rounds. Sure. Buff your units. He's an equal, which is not that good for blue. Lady Margarita told us of this. Reynard is just really good in a charge deck. If I would have a lock, I would immediately go for it. Let's fill the deck here. Leave it to us. There we go. Two points, still good. Probably want to keep this. So four points behind. You can still give charges. Don't want to use this. Five is fine. What do we boost though? We boost the Mark and Defender, probably. The question is also if we use Call of the Forest here. We could Call of the Forest into Sheldon. 
would be still pretty decent. Could also go for Seekrin. Go immune. Uh oh, go resilient. Let's go for Flea right now and let's just I don't know, let's buff this up. Therefore, it's more likely that it will stay buffed. There we go. More carryover for me thanks to my smugglers, which is really good. So the longer we can play the round, the better will be our remaining rounds. Sure. Buffing up his units. Like, it's a big setup. So the question is if how long we want to play into this. Well, we can play two. Well, he didn't. He didn't use it, so it's easy for me to just play more into this. I can just play mid dwarf. I probably wanna don't want to have any run free anyway. <laughs> and if he like goes really ahead, we just pass at some point. Then that's the that's the beauty of being a red. We can always call off the forest if we really want to. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But why did he use the charges already? I mean, like. Bloody Baron would have been pretty cool. So we need now eight. Unicorn would be eight. Call of the Forest is basically a 12. Because we would use Sheldon. This becomes a 12 by call, through Call of the Forest. Do we want to go one more card here? I mean, I don't. I, getting Cleaver a second time would be not bad, actually. Or do we go for Carryover? But not enough. Let's go Call of the Forest here, and let's go for Sheldon. There we go, let's get buff for free. Reach 2, we can just play it here. And what do we hit for 6? Do we care? Let's get it for so this way we are now one point ahead again, so we can't pass on us. And we get even more like carryover things to the smugglers. The the ah, and we get so many good stuff out of him, look at this, so many engine cards. So now he has now really good setup. Yeah, and he actually uses it. There we go. So by using all of this, like we can't keep, uh, keep up. But this is fine because we've got all the speed, sweet carryover. Yeah, we, we, can't, we won't match that. And we don't care. We need to do our simple pass, and we are so happy with like a six uni like a seven unicorn, a ten point defender, an eight point milva, and we still have to fill a Vendral buff. So it's I feel very comfortable playing. Now I just need to draw into some card just to drop. I would love to get a dwarf agitator here, especially if he drive passes me. And I think he really likes to drive pass because he needs a long run. To get all the charges set up. So, would be even better for me. Okay, there's a question here. We don't have an agitator. I still have two mulligans. Do we risk it? I mean, it's not a bad chance. If you get unicorn, it's fine. Yeah, I, I, I guess I want to use my mulligans here. There we go. This is how you mulligan. Oh, the please North just drive us. Oh, he doesn't. Well, it's fine for me, I guess. We just lock road. Roch, Roche, Roche. Whatever. There you go. This is why we have Kieran the deck. Pew pew. We don't want to use Flavendral right now. We we wanna we wanna see pass first. Let's show him and if not, then we get one more card than he does because of Chernex. Why does he give? Oh, because it doesn't matter anyway. What is he doing? I locked it. What, what is he doing? I'm not sure if he's like knows what's going on. Do we play Melva here? Just because? No. This is enough. Slaughter them to a man. So he's still one point ahead. I, I'm not sure what he's doing to be honest. Like, I think he didn't see the lock. Dude, look at your board. I mean, I'm too old for this shit. Well, so this is like eight points now. I think we need to play the defender here. I mean, it's it's okay because we get like a card out of it. So, 
And then we can play the Agitator. This is 11. It's sad that we need to play the Unicorn, but hey. Um, this is like still a good play. And like, I want to keep Mark on Defender. Ah, that's why. Okay, sure. So this is this this was like nice bait. Like I could have just killed the Roche. A buzz is perfect for me. This is where we can um, play agitator. So he thinks he wins this round, which he won't. Okay. Question is just like, is it enough? This is a 13, so we get exactly two. When I use Philavandril though, I would save my Milva. It's probably one of the worst Philavandrils I've ever played. But it wins a bit around, and this is all I care about. Nice, we got the card advantage. And what a card we got, we got a 9 point Milva. Immune, pretty pretty decent. Okay, this is not shit. Cleaver is also not really... Can we make it buffed somehow? What's the likeliness? I don't think so. Are we actually could have getting buffed. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. Don't forget to tell me which deck you'd like to see next week. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more Homecoming deck guides. Thanks for watching everyone and hope to see you in game soon.